What's going on fight fans it's your host Sebastian and welcome back to the boxing tip now let me just start off by saying that I was wrong again big time especially on this one I made a breakdown and prediction video of how I felt this fight was gonna turn out and uh, well I mean I guess I was right about the fighters for the most part except for a Goonie but uh I don't know. I, I just didn't expect it to go down this way. I didn't expect Aguni to come out boxing the way he did. Man, he was doing fucking good. He was doing all the right things you could possibly do. Started off using his jab real well. Corrales, you know, would try to kind of breach the distance. And anytime Corrales tried to breach the distance that Aguni was comfortable with, he would just shoot this left hook down to the body or hit him with some body shots on the way in. And that was fucking, that shocked me because I'm like, dude, he's doing all the things that he needs to be doing right to avoid Jonathan Guzman from going on his, you know, volume punching momentum that he gains and, you know, eventually gets him out of there. But Jesus Christ, like, he basically shut down a lot of Jonathan Guzman's offense. Now, in the beginning portion of the fight, right, I saw the first round go into a goonie. I thought he did more. He landed a pretty good jab. And then I thought Corral, I mean, uh, Corrales, uh, Guzman, you know, in the second round did some pretty decent work. And then in the third round, like I said, I saw, I started to notice, you know, in the first and second round that Aguni was throwing that left hook to the body anytime Jonathan Guzman would try to breach the distance between the two that Aguni has set, you know, because he was setting the distance. He was keeping Jonathan Guzman, you know, at a, at a, uh, at a certain range. And anytime Jonathan Guzman broke the distance or breached Aguni's comfort zone, he would shoot that left hook down to the body. And sure as shit, in the third round, it happened, and he shot the left hook to the body, and Guzman went down immediately. There was no lag effect. Or there was no nothing. He went down as soon as that body punch landed. So then we get into the, about the fourth round. You know, pretty much it's the same story. Um, I like that Aguni was actually using... Uh, Jonathan Guzman's momentum to shoot his uh you know kind of like his more so his right hook and uh was basically timing Jonathan Guzman's head of where it was going to be at any time Jonathan Guzman tried to you know move laterally but he would move laterally to avoid the left hook right into a Goonie's right hand so that was fucking brilliant and then you could see you know like towards the middle rounds uh Jonathan Guzman finally comes alive he hurts a Goonie landing all sorts of punches and then it just stops i don't i don't know what the adjustment i don't know what adjustment aguni made unless he just really discouraged jonathan guzman because you know what i'm saying he wasn't he was effective but he wasn't getting him out of there probably like he wanted to and then the momentum switched back over to aguni and then it was just the same story all over again you know jonathan guzman i think he won in my opinion probably like the 10th round maybe the 11th round but uh, yeah, um, Aguni really sh uh, shocked me, man. He surprised me like a motherfucker in how he performed in this fight. Uh, he's a good boxer. He is a good boxer. Yeah, like I said, I still I stick by my statement that I say, you know, that he's still he's not a very flashy fighter or anything. He doesn't like, you know, what I'm saying. How do I explain this? He doesn't do anything like crazy out of the box. He does very subtle but very intelligent things to neutralize his opponent. And I and I saw that out of him in his, in his biggest test of his career. Fights that good. And I am looking forward to watching the next Yuki Nori Aguni fight, to be honest with you. And then uh, I think it was in like the, it might have been in like the ninth round. Or maybe it was like, it was either 9, 10 or 11. It was one of those rounds. Aguni was shooting those body shots again he was starting to come alive and kind of you know he started taking the fight more towards um, more to Jonathan Guzman than Jonathan Guzman was bringing the fight to him so I think that might have been that last momentum shift of the fight and then uh you see Aguni land these fucking a nice sweet uh, left hook to the midsection of uh Jonathan Guzman and then throw another left hook that landed in my opinion it wasn't that punch in particular that hurt him but it was a uh, it might have been the first left hook to the body but he throws a second left hook to the body that's like borderline low blow and then Jonathan Guzman goes down again the ref called it uh not a knockdown 
and I, I felt maybe it could have been ruled a knockdown, but, you know, ref's uh, decision is official, so I'm not going to really petition against that too much. But more so, I thought maybe it could have been a low blow, but then it couldn't have been. You know what I'm saying? I guess it depends. I didn't see where the referee was, you know what I'm saying, where he set the line to what is considered a low blow and what isn't. So I didn't really, you know what I'm saying? I didn't really... I don't know exactly where the low blow point was on Jonathan Guzman. All I know is that it didn't hit him in the groin in that area. It hit him a little bit under the belt line, the top of the trunks, but it wasn't so low that he hit him in the dick and, you know what I'm saying, or hit him in the balls and he fucking fell. Uh, definitely not the case. But, um, yeah, I mean, but that wasn't the funny part. The funny part about that, no, it, like, it made me laugh, even though I was kind of like, that's kind of fucked up, but it made me laugh. Well, when he went down from that body punch, obviously it hurt Jonathan Guzman. As you guys know, if you go down, you know, if it's a serious low blow, you know, you get up to five minutes to recover, of recovery time. Well, Jonathan Guzman, you know what I'm saying, he wasn't very, uh, you know, eager to get back into the fight, so he took his time, which, hey, if you got it, go ahead and use it, but... Nevertheless, I still feel like that wasn't so much of a low blow where you had to take three minutes of the five minutes, you know, to recover. Or it was somewhere. It was roughly three minutes, something like that. I know I, it felt like I was waiting forever. But, um, you know, or it could have been a little bit less. Somewhere, maybe three minutes, two minutes to three minutes. And then uh, when they got back into fighting, somebody threw a fucking something. Somebody from the crowd threw something at Jonathan Guzman, it looks like. They even like slowed it down, but you can't exactly. It looked like a soda bottle, but you couldn't really tell exactly what it was. Nevertheless, I thought that was kind of fucked up, but at the same time, I kind of find it. I found it a little comical, and you know, I don't blame anybody who would call it a low blow. But then again, I don't see it so much as being a low blow. You know what I mean? So I guess that perception could either you know go to different sides on the uh, different sides of the argument. So. Anybody can make the argument that it was a low blow. I don't blame the people who don't think it was a low blow either. So, but great fight, man. It was it was a pretty good fight. I, it shocked the shit out of me. I feel bad for picking against a Goonie, but uh, you know what I'm saying. It's a uh, you know he showed he showed that he can box, man. He showed that he can box and he has some tools and that he ain't afraid to use them. And he don't give a fuck who is obviously a guy coming in 22 and 0 with 22 knockouts. You would feel maybe just a little bit nervous about going into a fight like that, but that there showed no signs of nervousness or anything from Yuki Nori Guni. Uh, I give it up to Japan, man. They they are they got a new belt holder, so you know props to them. I'm pretty sure all but Uchiyama won, so that's always a good uh good thing, you know, for for country. So you know, and given that that was one of the last fights this year man so I, I give it up to japan again man for putting on a spectacular last two days of boxing so you know i show some love to you guys man but uh let me know what you guys think of the fight man i, I, I watched kind of a shitty copy i wasn't able to catch it live i watched a shitty copy on uh, online but you know if you could find a better copy you know watch the fight man let me know what you guys think let me know who you think won uh it was it wasn't a lopsided fight i could say that much I might have made it seem that way, but it was a pretty good fight. You know, both guys did their thing. Uh, Yuki Nori Aguni was just the better man and just had the better game plan all around. But uh, let me know what you guys think. Also, share the video. Introduce somebody to uh, boxing. You know, we got 2017 coming up. It's a very good time to try to get somebody caught up for some really good fights happening in 2017. So, but that's all I got for you on this one. Uh, I'll talk to you guys on the next one. Sebastian from the Boxing Tips signing out. Peace.